Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Today we'll be talking about the Lord's protection, the Lord's protection. Now, if someone is not in the will of, of the Most High, or doing things that are not of sound doctrine, it's not likely, or doing things against his you know, like we said, against his will or against the word, it's not likely he's going to be protective. However, his grace with sin abound, grace did much more. So the grace will keep a person up until they repent, but they'll keep being challenges because the scriptures also say uh, the ways of a transgressor is hard. So if you fall from that grace, it eventually. Um, you know, after receiving knowledge of the truth, there's no sacrifice for your sins. So eventually you're going to get to a point where you're either going to call on them and get delivered and pray for repentance and be baptized in his name and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you know, water immersion and truly show works thereafter of faith and declaration or it's going to come a point where you're in the wrath of the Most High. So we're going to go to the scriptures and just read about the things, some things, uh, in brief that, you know, bring us about the Lord's protection. Sure, we all going to leave here one day. I'm sure those that are, are suffer with him are going to reign with him. There's long suffering. A lot of things are going to happen to the saints in the last days. Does that mean he didn't protect them? No. You know. Look what happened to uh, what Peter, crucified upside down. Look what happened to the Messiah himself. You know, so it didn't mean that the Father did not protect or keep him. But no greater love, you know what I mean, than a, than a man lay down his life for his friend. So he did that. He could have dispatched angels like he told Pilate and them right now, you know. Even one of the uh, people on the cross was like, you know, he was trying to get Christ to do that, you know. And, uh, but the other one said, listen, remember me. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So... Again, this is not, I do what I want to do my whole life, and then in my last breath, call on the name of the Lord, because the scriptures clearly say not everyone that calls on his name should be saved. Let's jump into this. We're going to Psalms chapter 4. Amen? So be it. And it reads, Hear me when I call. This is King David, King of Israel. Hear me when I call, O Yahweh of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me, when I was in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. See that? So a lot of the distresses and the things that we all go through, you know, some of it is, is part of the fruits of the Spirit. Again, long suffering is one of the fruits of the Spirit, not one of the works of the flesh. And we got to know the Messiah and the fellowship of the suffering. So he's saying, have mercy. But he said, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. That's that protection. That's that grace, you know, and mercy that follows us. Because even when you're going through, sometimes you're being uh, so beat down by, by, the, by the devil and there's little demons on assignment. Sometimes you don't see the Most High is making a way. He's opening the door. Speak, Holy Ghost. He's opening a door somewhere. Because he can open doors no man can shut and shut doors no man can open, the scriptures say. Well, look on this. And he said, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. You know, so we got to be in that place, right place for prayers to be heard. You know what I mean? And it starts with repentance. You know, it starts. And some people, and I'm going I'm to open up with, with a, just a simple repentance prayer. Because some people say, hey, listen, I've never been to a church or temple. Um, you know, I didn't have that grandmother or, or that mother or father. I, I didn't even have a mother. You know, you know, I, I was adopted or a foster child. Or I was raised by my godmother or an auntie. Or, or neither, or my dad. My dad was into sports, so he didn't really want to go to the temples or nothing like that, or whatever the case may be. It could be worse, you know what I mean? I was abandoned. You know, my father was, was, was taken away from this earth years ago, or my mother, or, or something, you know, so who knows? So listen up, if people can't just be judging why somebody might get up in age of being an adult and have not, you know, have no interest in the scriptures or in, in repentance. A lot of people, even churches and some big-time pastors and bishops, 
they go all crazy on a person. You don't even know what what happened. They might have been raised in a whole other religion, you know, and it took time for them themselves to see, okay, this ain't it. You know what I mean? Or it might be somebody that's was raised in all this education and intelligence, and hey, this is how you survive in this world, you know, as far as how their upbringing was. This is what you really need. Don't get caught up in no religions and all. You know, and things like that. And so it, it has taken time for them to weigh and seek and search themselves. And they may say, hey, listen, now I realize. I realize the lineage truth of the scriptures. I realize, you know, different things. So you can't beat somebody down. Somebody may come up into, into the church or the temple, tattoos all over, cleavage hanging down, you know, exposed almost, you know, large breasts or whatever the case may be or whatever. You know what I mean? Or a guy comes in, thug, might have tats all on his face. Might have left a life of gangbanging or whatever. So now you know, oh, he can't be in this church because look how he looks. Look at the, you know, I mean, come on. You don't know what that person's been through. Give him a chance to repent. But no, you know, see, God is telling me, you know, and I'm not saying that sometimes folk can come up in there and they do have a demonic spirit or demonic intentions on assignment from Satan. I'm not saying that. That's where your spiritual discernment comes in. But, you know, so anyway, if you are that person, it's very simple. You know how to Instagram. You know how to email. You know how to text. Uh, <laughs> you know how to do all these things. You know what I'm saying? Get on the phone and talk and do all this kind of stuff. Some of you driving and talking, speak the phone, you have no problems. You know what I mean? TikToking and everything else. Let's talk to them real simple. With respect, grace, and, and honor, you know, and praise to him. No disrespect to him. Because he is the almighty, the creator. And it's believing in his son that you have that salvation. You just, Lord, I'm a sinner. I have not done a lot of things right. I've sinned. Over and over again, I'm surprised I'm still alive. It ain't been nothing but you, you, you watching down on me, your grace, your mercy. I don't really know how to pray. I don't know nothing about Bible and people telling me it's, it's, it's not a real book. It's this, it's that. Other things predated. I'm hearing all these last day, different uh, uh, observations and beliefs and all that. But I've, I've realized I have a gut feeling now. I've been led by some people to lead me to this truth. And I want to be saved. I see the world ending. I see these things going on, viruses and wars and things that you said in this book, pestilences and famines and diseases, wars, rumors of wars, kingdoms and kingdoms. It's a struggle. I never knew your name. I get up, I just say, well, God help me. But now I want to know you in spirit and in the truth. So I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to have mercy on me and help me, lead me, show me, help me understand your scriptures help me understand who I am. It was a time I felt suicidal, giving up on life. Nothing seemed to go right. And I got tired of living. But Lord, I just need you now in my life to show me a way. Lead me to some people that's going to really help me. Not always about my money or my looks or what I have or don't have. But really have integrity and see that I'm hurting. Not take advantage of my weaknesses or my sorrows or my depressions. Lord, come into my life and forgive me and strengthen me. See how that is? Very sincere, very open and honest. And that's how you want to pray. You know, sometimes you got to step in power when you, when you grow in the Lord. When you get off of the milk into the meat of the word, then you start getting into the power when these little evil things come at you. But let's continue in the scriptures. Amen. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? See? Because that's all we're doing when we're walking in a transgression away from the Most High, doing what we want to do, like the prodigal son. And I ain't talking about TV. I'm talking about the scriptures. You know, he had everything, but he went out there and messed up all his inheritance. Then he realized, hey, I had it good. You know, and so when he went back to his father, they threw a big party for him. Now, the brother was like, are you throwing a party and music and all that for this guy? And he left. But the oldest brother, he said, listen, son, when I go, I'm going to give all this to you. So you, you, you'll be able to share it with his brother, but because you remained. But we got to, you know, our brother was once lost, but now it's found. We got to have that, that grace. 
You know, we've got to show that. Oh, ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Seek it after things that's only that you only got to give back. Vanity, things that are meaningless, you know. Some things we can be content with what we have. Some things we want just to just for a show. For others to say, oh, you got that. Oh, you went out and copped that joint. Oh, you the man. Oh, girl, go ahead. I see you. Got, you know. So it's not that you can't have things and you got to live so like poverty. Like I'm just waiting on the Lord. No, you can have things, but you can't be caught up as in, in abusing this world, as the scriptures say, and loving money, which is the root of all evil. Now, money, answer for all things, helps us survive. But when it becomes worshipped, I'll do anything for it. That's bad, according to the scriptures. But know that Yahweh have set apart him that is godly for himself. That's a blessing. For him that is godly set aside for himself to build, to love. Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. See that? Because now we're lining up with the will. We're doing those things. The law, statutes, and commandments. Stand in awe. Stand in awe. Stand in awe. And sin not. Because these are things that keep you from him. You know? Because he knew he doesn't know sin. He knew no sin. He was tempted on all points and he knew no sin. He's not, he, he was acquainted with our griefs. He's not a, he, was, he was no sinner, but he took it on. On the cross, our sins as the sacrifice, because burning up uh, bulls and rams and goats and sprinkling the blood on the priests, that's the Old Testament. The New Testament, as he said, the Most High said, you know, I'm going to send my son, Yahweh Shah, down here, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yehoshua, Yahshua, Yahweh. I'm going to send him down and be the ultimate sacrifice. And the, t and the curtains torn in two to go into the holiest of holies and set down on the right hand. You know, that's the ultimate. So the Old Testament is done away with. That's what the scripture means when the bulls and burning and all that of the rams for repentance. It don't mean the book of the Old Testament. That's where a lot of saints get that mixed up. Well, my pastor said, oh, don't read the Old Testament because it's done away with. No, the testament of giving bulls and rams and goats and all that is that was a testament of sin. You know, the New Testament, like he said, this is the, in my blood and my body, the new covenant, communion. But it don't mean the scriptures, because there's stuff in the scriptures that the prophets talk about that haven't even happened yet. You know, and you got explaining that to some people sometimes, like they want to just, oh no, the New Testament. And that's one of the reasons why you don't know the lineage, because you don't want to go all the way. Let's continue. Standing on sin not, commune with your own heart upon your own bed and be still. See, lot, think about it, be still, commune with the Most High, communicate. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahweh. There be many that say, because those are sacrifices of, of your lips, praise unto him. He inhabits the praises of his people. Who will show us any good? Yahweh, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Look upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that the corn and, and the wine increase. See, more than the time when, when uh, monies and vanities and things and all that. And all these prosperity things increase, but the gladness. We need the most high. You can't do this without him. You're going to get to a point where, you know what I mean? He is the GPS, so to speak, of our life. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Let's read this last verse. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Yahweh, only makest me dwell in safety. That's the protection. But we got to line up with his will. With his will. Now, when things happen, does it mean he didn't protect when something happens? No. Because this we're here in this world, you know? But we're not of the world. Right? So we went over all that world stuff with John 3.16 in that message. So you want the most high's protection. You want his protection. We need his protection. Day in, day out. Night in, night out. Because there's always... Like the Bible says, that the, at your, your adversary, the devil, is going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. So we have to be strong in doing all we can. Stand. We read that right in this. Stand in all. Be encouraged. Stay strong. Shalom.